Guys, just got a little bit of safety stuff that we need to run through before we carry on, okay? So firstly, if you're sitting on one of the outside edges of the boat, please just make sure you keep your hands and your arms inside the boat today, okay? No reaching out, trying to grab hold of anything. Now the other one as well, please remain seated for me today, all right? Unless I tell you otherwise, I want you guys just to keep your behinds on the cushions today. You see me doing this one, what's that gonna mean? We're doing a 360. Going for a spin, yeah. So I want you guys to be holding on for those. Grabbing hold of the handrails that are in front of you. Yes, I'll With your holding feet, here, placing eh? them nice and firmly into the floor in front if you can reach. Okay, and then pushing yourself back into the seat. So it's not a pull forward, it's a push back. Last couple of bits, guys. There is a uh, radio in my life jacket just here. There's another radio to the left of my steering wheel. First aid kit is in the front of the boat. There's a fire extinguisher tucked down next to my feet should we need any of that stuff today. Now our plan of action, we're just going to head out of the bay a really short distance, come back and around towards this five knot marker you can see on your right hand side. Once we get here we're going to throw our first spin of the day. This one's going to be a photo opportunity so if you can multitask, try and smile, otherwise just hold on. <laughs> well. yeah. After that guys we'll head out of the bay towards a remarkable mountain range. That's where we'll drop onto our first river and we'll get into it from there. Okay? Any questions at all? Nope. Oh, good. Easy. That's good. Nice. <laughs> 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 so, hey guys, so just a couple of things in regards to our spins. Um, obviously, the boat's quite empty today, right? Which means you might move around a bit more. That's sort of like a slow to mid range spin, so I can get them faster and harder, all right? But you guys might need to hold on a little bit tighter and keep each other nice and tight in the boat there, all right? Are there any questions at all before we set off? Nope. Right
awesome. Right, oh guys, so we've uh, we've just covered a really small portion of Lake Wakatipu. Drop down underneath the Kawaro Falls Dam, and now we're down here onto our first river today, the Kawaro River. Now we're gonna follow this one down towards the Remarkables mountain range you can see out in front of you. But if you follow that mountain range down to the left hand side where that finishes, that's where we're gonna find our second river down there, the shot over. Okay? Yeah. Now, guys, anytime you see me stand up and face you like this, it is an opportunity to take photos. I don't do dedicated photo stops and all the rest of it, okay? Just to kind of make your moments. So if you do want to get photos along the way, these are your opportunities. So I'll be doing a few stops along the way today. Um, the other one as well is if you do have any questions at all, don't be shy to ask them. All right, I will always give you an opportunity to ask those questions once again, once I'm sitting down facing you guys, okay? Having a bit of a chat. That being said, any questions? Uh, no. No. Now, does anyone know? I've got a question for you guys. Does anyone know why the Remarkables are called the Remarkables? Mm, no. You're not brave enough to have a stab in the dark. I know they're running the through north south. You're on the money, mate. You're the first person to ever get that. You know what? The last time I was on this jet boat, they told us the same thing. Oh, <laughs> got a good memory. I'll give yes. you that. And good ears. What was the answer? So they, uh, they're actually called the most people think because they look remarkable but it's not it's actually because they run remarkably true north to south oh. all right oh. so if you follow the ridge line out to the left that is directly north no. if you follow it down to the right is directly south so it's actually one of three mountain ranges in the world that do that the other oh. two being the rockies and the andes and the americas so we're pretty lucky to have that one there and a little old new zealand just on our doorstep oh. Oh. so you guys will make our way down
got you right inside here. This is our second river joining up. Right, this one is the shot over. Now they are two very different rivers that we're traveling on here today. Obviously you've got that beautiful bluey green and also super clear cold oak that's coming down through here. Right, with the shot over, it's not quite as crystal clear at the moment, just because we have had a lot of rain over the New Year period and the river's finally just starting to clear up now, okay? So it's still got a little bit of that uh, silty sediments and stuff in it. But the other really big difference in these two rivers is the volume that is in them. This one here is what we call a high volume river, shot over being low volume. Now to put that in perspective, we say this one here's got an average depth of somewhere around about four to six meters, whereas the average depth of the shot over is more like 20 to 30 centimeters. That's quite a big difference. Oh. Now this boat's designed for shallow water and it'll travel real comfortably in anything around about four inches. Okay, if you're not sure what that looks like, it's about this much water. Mm. Okay, that's all the boat needs to be traveling in. And that's actually where it performs generally at its best. That's okay, where you get your most power out of it, your most speed, and also your most control. Once we uh, get down around to the two inch mark, we're gonna probably start hearing things and that's gonna be the boat connecting with the bottom of the river. Okay, so if you do start hearing some funny noises, clangs, bangs, scrapes, slides, that's pretty normal for us. No need to stress out, it's just another day in the office. So you don't got any questions? Yeah, yeah, so unlike a conventional boat, everything in this boat here, a jet boat, is internal inside the hull. So there's nothing that hangs down below it. The hull of the boat, everything is inside that. So we've got two V8s in the back of this boat here with jet units strapped to them. So essentially the jet unit sits on the floor of the boat with a grill. So water is sucked up through that grill. There's a propeller inside a housing. So it's not like your normal external propeller, it's inside a housing. So that's sucking water up through that grill. Gets pressurized through the, uh, the jet unit there and we fire that out the back of the boat at a rate of around about 800 liters of water a second. All right. Now obviously we've got two of those. In the, on this boat here, but all I'm doing in the front is I'm directing that jet blast so I can control which direction I turn it with the steering wheel which obviously gives us a propulsion to push us forward and I've got a single gas pedal down here which is connected to both throttles on the same engine All right, and I need that throttle to be able to give me more water to push me where I want to go harder and faster Okay, so you'll see coming into a corner I'll probably button off maybe give a little stab of the gas to get the boat going where I want it to go and then I'm probably going to flick it around and then I'm going to punch it and that's going to propel us around that corner there. That's sort of the, the basic gist of how a jet boat works I guess. Any other questions guys? Yes? Have you ever tried someone that's getting on here before? No, we did try uh, wakeboarding once. There was a pro wakeboarder who uh, had the rope tied off on the back of the roll bar there. Alright, tied him off and we did a, bit of, did a bit of wakeboarding with a pro, pro once before. Um, but they're not really any good for uh, biscuiting or anything like that. They don't create a very big weight behind them. Uh, yeah. Good questions. Anyone else got another? How much is one of these things going to sting me? <laughs> Anywhere from about 300 to half a mil. Excellent. Next paycheck, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See there, guys. We're gonna make our way up the river. Once we get up to the very top, there, I'll make another stop. We'll have a quick chat, and if you guys do think of any other questions uh, along that way, feel free to ask them once we get up there. Okay. Right. Yeah.
all good? Sweet. Right, oh guys, so this is as far up the shot over river as we can come today. Up any further, it actually turns into where another company operates down to, and as you can imagine, jet boats flying at each other, probably not ideal. So we stick to our own ends of the river, and then we don't have anything to worry about. Now, we've covered about 22-ish kilometres to get to this point just here, and we've done a big loop around what is known as the Wapatipu Basin. Essentially, that's brought us right in around behind Queenstown. So we're actually only about three to five kilometres away from where we started, smack bang over the top of the hill just there. Now the other one as well, this river that we're travelling on, this one here is actually regarded as the second wealthiest river in the world. And that's due to the amount of gold that's come out of it. So a real, a really extensive gold rush in the 1800s, kind of what bounded the central Otago region. Right, and this river here was uh, the heart of the gold rush. They do still find quite a bit in it today, but mainly on the gold pan more than anything else. Now in a moment I'll spin the boat around, we'll head back down. On the way back down it will be the fastest we get on the trip, so we'll get up to about 90, 95 kilometres an hour. Now I won't be doing any spins on the way downstream, we're just carrying a bit too much speed along with the speed of the water, it does get a little bit sketchy. So if you guys wanted to do any filming or recording, it is a good opportunity to do so. Please just remember your phone's for your own responsibility, alright, so don't lose it. And then as we exit out of this river, back down onto the Kawado, that big blue river, I'll throw a big spin down there, so you might want to tuck your phones away and hold on nice and tight. Any questions? Sweet, righto, we'll spin around and get stuck in.